Hello everyone, welcome to the next part of the video, The Unknown Citizen by W. H. Auden. Here we are going to talk about the respective lines and also the criticisms associated with these lines, which in which you will find solace from your mundane daily routine and you find that this reputation, this recurrence occurred a long time back in Auden's poetry uh, and the best example is The Unknown Citizen. So without much ado, uh, let's begin with the poem at once. And our social psychology workers found that he was popular with his mates and liked a drink. The press are convinced that he bought a paper every day and that his reactions to advertisements or you can pronounce it also as advertisements that were at to the advertisements were normal in every way so the social psychology means union and the social psychology workers who kept a constant watch on him that he was popular the citizen was an amiable and an affable person someone who went along in quite a friendly way with his friends the word popular emphasizes the citizen's complete compliance with the accepted and the given. So he did not go beyond that was the, which was uh, the norm or as it was set down by the state or the institution. This line further hints at the normalcy that it was the practice of the workers to visit a pub on their way back from a long day at the factory. And this was popular during the era. So there he was doing this unknown citizen was doing nothing extraordinary it was well beyond the norms so again his visiting the pub his spending time with his mates was something that was not unusual or something that was not his characteristic feature rather it was the popular or the norm and that his reactions to the advertisements or advertisements were normal in every way so, the advertisements that appeared in the paper, uh, the reactions also to, the, uh, to them were very important. They were again something that was not remarkably different. Again, it conformed to the set patterns. There is nothing, as I have mentioned here also, there is nothing special or unique spoken about the citizen by the government officials or the records. The narration of the usual activities makes us feel oddly familiar with the otherwise unknown citizen. We find similarity here because uh, the life that we spend here, the, the numbers, the statistics that we, uh, as we belong to the government offices or uh, the institutions are basis similar, uh, just on the basis of some numbers or facts. Our personal identity, our special features are uh, not taken into consideration most of the time. Also, another reference, as I was talking about the press, is that here the speaker disconnects between the citizen and the state and the poet, Auden here, illustrates the shift of the societal values from individuality and towards the social norm. So it doesn't matter whether he himself is enjoying it within himself. Uh, there is uh, no expression or no mention of the feelings of grief or uh, happiness that has been uh, reiterated here or that has been narrated here. It is more a matter of conforming to the norms and that was of primary importance. So individuality is slowly lost. The newspapers and the reactions all appear normally. So there is nothing special or uh, nothing marked in his reactions. You will notice here that Auden is highlighting the prominent state establishments and their mediatory role between the state and the citizens. Uh, like in the previous stanzas, here too, uh, the poet reveals the surreptitious state ideology. We are not quite familiar, we are not quite clear with the state ideology, hence it is surreptitious. We understand that by providing all the facilities that the state government poses to do as a model welfare state because as a model welfare state as you will see in the following lines policies taken out in his name prove that he was fully insured and his health card shows that he was in hospital but left it cured 
so in these two lines it is very clear that the state's only aim was to portray itself as a modern welfare state it doesn't matter whether the citizens were actually being benefited whether it was truly working for its positivity for its welfare or not phrases such as he was fully insured once in a hospital but left cured display the state's hidden intention of self promotion in fact they also depict the state's doubt over its good governance so uh, we do not know whether that person was truly cured or not the picture like of the health card that we get in these two lines and his health card shows that he was once in hospital but left it cured in these two lines we get two pictures the picture first picture is that the reiteration that the official presented that everything was fine which may not be the case and second is that it may also mean that he lived such an ordinary that, that is the unknown citizen lived such an ordinary or an average life that uh, he was uh, it was probably way beyond the norm for him even to get unwell policies taken out in his name prove that he was fully insured so the policies also prove this is very important because the monitoring of the citizen by the insurance companies that has been mentioned here by the uh, or highlighted here by the word proof uh, is the reference that the insurance was again under he was insured again under an institution which in turn kept a watch over him and uh, this again shows uh, takes part with the other institutions that we came across earlier like the union the social psychology workers the fudge motors incorporated and so on uh, before we move on to the next lines one thing a few things that i would like to uh, you for like you to note is that Uh, at the very beginning if you try to compare with uh, the present thing and uh, with the beginning of the poem you will see that at the very beginning of the poem we sense the immense influence and the control of the state over the individual the impersonal and uh, the indifferent way in which the government treats the citizens his existence is as cold as the marble statue that was erected in his or, uh, honor we do not find him expressing any emotions he is not given any voice it is the speaker who is narrating in a cold impersonal detached way They're narrating it like a report the poem adopts a big bro- big brother like uh, attitude much like if you have read george orwell's 1984 or aldous huxley's brave new world you will find much similarity here that uh, the state is an all knowing entity except for the things that really matter the poem however is not pessimistic but makes the use of humor to speak against the numbing effects of the modern life so uh, apart from the control of the social institutions we cannot ignore the numbing effects of the modern life how in modern life everything means to conform and going by the rules without having anything much to do about or anything much to experiment about where your identity or your personality doesn't matter whether uh, you are in a, uh, whether you have something special in your dreams whether uh, you are something as possessed of some unique capability ultimately you will have to partake in the um, rat race Uh, one thing another thing uh, not one thing another thing that i would like to refer here is that uh, in the while talking of the norms and the conformity uh, which i would like to add on to the previous uh, explanation that he never got fired he never got unwell these two uh, phrases uh, shows that something is there is nothing extraordinary in it he bought a newspaper every day this highlights the mundane he went to office every day he never got fired he never got unwell he brought the newspaper he read the advertisement this suggests the mundane uh the man with the reference to this the press this lines as you see is very important uh, the man or the citizen unknown citizen was as susceptible to advertising as he was uh, supposed to be and committed to the news of the day continuing in this theme of dystopia though it is not pessimistic it is dystopia it is quite uh, cl- likely that his life was consumed with the propaganda produced by these agencies agencies the insurance companies agencies the union 
the social psychology workers that uh, work under some institution uh, then the greater community the fudge motors incorporated these were some institutions and the biggest was uh, someone something rather called the greater community which we can assume as the state mechanism all these agencies are produced by all these agencies it, he was probably consumed by the with the propaganda produced by these agencies and it is hard to know who this person truly was what were uh, the uh, what were his feelings uh, what was he up to with these uh, purely surface details it is very difficult for us to understand uh, who actually he is moving on to the next lines both producers research and high grade living declare he was fully sensible to the advantages of the installment plan and that everything necessary to the modern man a phonograph a radio a car and a frigidaire these lines are equally important that in turn highlight the irony that is predominant throughout the poem these lines and the following ones convey that apart from utilizing the health insurance he took great advantages of the economic installment plans to buy the modern appliances we the readers wonder whether the necessity and the possession of the modern appliances is the result of the ads that he saw in the newspaper because it is sure to bound uh, surely to have or bound to have an impact on him uh if we talk about slightly of the background as you see i have mentioned here in the poem too that researching into industrial products market responses as well as the newer business strategies like the installment plans were some of the economic ventures during the poet's time modern the word modern has two important meanings first it may emphasize that the man is modern or it he may be called modern only when he possesses the modern appliances and second is that modern man is someone who conforms though through these conformity through these conforming uh, the man or the citizen conforming to the rules and the state mechanism or the state machinery uh, orden ironically points out the irony and uh, the danger of conforming blindly without having any voice so as a modern man he owned a uh, few things one is a phonograph a radio a car and a frigidaire possessing of these was the sign of the modernity as i already mentioned earlier and orden was critical of such state sponsored capitalism which was like the closest opponent of the citizenship it means that these were the markers by which uh, a man uh, could be called modern or identified as modern if uh, we uh, want to compare it or if you want the readers uh, want you the readers to uh, compare it uh, with the things that was uh, being uh, carried out during those times these uh, uh, holding of phonograph radio car and frigidaire just to name a few Uh, you can uh, compare it with aldous huxley's modernity snobs in his uh, work Sel- selected snobberies there you will find the details more clearly stated and stark comparisons you can draw from there also our researchers into public opinion are content that he held the proper opinions for the time of the year when there was peace he was for peace when there was war he went so our researchers this again hints at the direct interference of the state machinery it was the state who kept a constant watch in his life or in his family's life public opinion this is another institution the public opinion department studied into the model of the citizens perceptions and views regarding the newer developments of the states and this again hints at uh, the reg- another regulatory body which uh, controlled or uh, regulated the societal norms functionings and the regulations 
that held the proper opinions for the time of the year. The public opinion department studied these and they held the opinions of the citizens from time to time, whether it was uh, according to the or uh, abiding by the welfare of the state rules or regulations, whether it was working something against it, or uh, whether there was any need for motivating, diverting, controlling the, these opinions. When there was peace, he was peace, he was for peace. When there was war, he went. So the unknown citizen stood for peace during the times of peace and during the time of war, he went to the war as the state wanted. So there was no practically his, there was no practically his say. So it was, it all depended upon the state. And uh, again, the citizen conformed to the state's direction. He was lost in the general well-being as in the welfare principles of the emerging state. So what mattered to the state ultimately was the welfare. It's uh, being portrayed as a welfare state, not whether the citizens were actually being benefited or not. You will see that the language employed uh, in these lines is colloquial and the allusions to the common possessions like radio, car, installment plans allow the readers to easily engage in and identify with the poetic statement from public to personal everywhere he is conforming everywhere he is conforming uh, as i talk uh, spoke about the advertising industry having an impact few things i would like to say uh, tell here is that this advertising industry is built largely upon the subtle persuasion that as a citizen one needs whatever product they are selling and that is another mark of modernity However, it is often the case that one does not require that product in any real sense at all.